So I know the deadline for property taxes, and it's been a buzz for quite some time, was on the 15th of May. And so you might be asking yourself, um, first of all, those that you probably helped, are property taxes protests worth it? And then is it even worth it to still keep going and reaching out to your sphere? So I have with me today the Chief Operating Officer of Lone Star Property Taxes, Emma Hussain. Please come on up. And now she's a property tax consultant and has been doing this for quite some time, but give us a little history. How'd you start in this? Because this seems like so boring to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so I actually have a medical background. Um, I'm a medical assistant and I was working with the city of Houston for a long time. So um, I was in the government field for a while time. and um, I, uh, right, right around COVID, I, um, left the city, was in need of a job, was looking for a job. I had a friend who's actually my business partner. Um, he worked at Harris County Appraisal District. Um, he told me he could get me on. He got me on with one interview, um, started doing it. I really liked it, um, but I was only there for a year. And the reason I was only there for a year is my heart bled out to all the sob stories when these homeowners came in. And it was just it's not something you can do day in, day out. I mean, the benefits are great, but listening to those stories and how the counties are ripping you off, you just, you can't, I couldn't stay. So I started my own thing. So now you're passionate about helping people reduce your, your taxes. Right. So let me give you a little insight of how that she um, From her time in doing this, she has been able to um, reduce more than 7.86 $7.86 million in property tax savings. She's presented over 6,000 hearings on property tax consulting. Mm -hmm. Too bad, y'all should have been here. <laughs> Okay, so just to repeat that, she has had about $7.86 million in property tax savings and has presented over 6,000 hearings on property tax consultants. So is it worth it to protest your taxes? Absolutely. Why? Because there is a lot of room for error. Can you tell us more about that? So it's actually uh, one of my myths and facts um, that we're going to go over shortly, uh, but what a lot of people don't understand is that the county does their valuations on a mass appraisal level, right? Um, that is their model. That's what they're required to do. And so that's how it's being done. It's not being done specifically for your home. So it's not being done for the $40,000 worth of upgrades that you may or may not have versus that neighbor to you. It's being done for the whole neighborhood as a whole. So there is a lot of room for error. All right. So what's a common myth? A common myth is that the um, homestead exemption 10% cap starts the first year. So what's the truth? The truth is it starts the second year. Why is that? So if you think about it, let's say I, I purchased my home May of 2022. That whole year was not mine to claim as ownership, right? There was another owner that was partly owner with me. So that's not my value to claim. So if I bought it in May of 2022, and then if they put that 10% cap as of January 1st, 2023, it's not on my value. It belonged to someone else because I was only owner partly through the year. So you have to live in your house a full first year before that value is yours. So the whole 2023 would then be your value and 2024 would cap. So a common myth that I see out there is that appealing your property taxes will result in increased assessments. Have you found that to be true? No. Can you tell us more about that? Um, we're seeing a lot of that this year, um, that the counties are overwhelmed. And so the counties are giving away offers just to make people go away. Um, so that's definitely a plus always. Um, more than that, Harris County is the biggest county in the whole state of Texas, and only 10% of the constituents actually protest. The other 90 just take their value. That's a lot of money for the county. And now imagine for Ben County, which we're in, and it's much smaller, they need all their money. 
So if we can go by a similar percentage, let's say we even go by 50%. If 50% of Ford Benz constituents do not protest, it's a lot of money they're making. And they're hoping on that. They're banking on that. They're banking on the fact that you will not protest. So how does the protest process start? So as you mentioned, the deadline just passed. So the first step is to obviously protest, file the protest by that deadline. Um, then there are three steps. There's an informal, which is a quick 15 minute one-on-one. -on -one. Um, it could be virtual now that we're in post COVID times, um, or it could be in person. There is the formal process, which is three unbiased representatives that are the panel. And I say unbiased because they're not really so unbiased if their daily stipend is paid by the county that they're sitting in. So with that being said, there is that panel. And then the third step is litigation. So essentially suing the county. And is it successful in suing the county? You had a major suit recently, right? Um, so litigation does take quite a bit of time. Um, out of all of our clients, we only sent one to litigation last year. They haven't even gotten something scheduled yet for 2022. So I don't even know when that litigation is going to complete um, or when they're going to actually see some money back if they win. Uh, arbitrations for 2022 is are also going on for us. So even those are quite delayed by the state. So it's a process. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right. So another myth that I see out there is that appealing uh, your property taxes and putting a protest out there will hurt your property's market value in the future. How many of you actually go on to the county's website when you um, are putting up a listing? How many of you actually base your selling price off of that county's? Okay, you guys answered. Yeah, you guys answered it for me. The counties have been, I, I hate to say it, as a homeowner, um, yes, you think the counties are overvaluing. But as a realtor, if we are in this market, let's be real, guys. The counties are undervalued. And so it's not going to help your market value because no one really looks at that. You're, you're basing it off of the comparables. You're basing it off of that home that sold three doors down for 50K more than where you were wanting to put it. Okay, so the property taxes are kind of composed of whatever they assess minus any type of exemptions. So let's talk about a couple of exemptions. What is the most common unused exemption that you found in your business? Residential homestead. Regular homestead. And unlike when I first started in this business, you had to wait till the following year, January, for that to start. But now we can file, and your clients can file immediately mm -hmm. for residential homestead. And yet, mm -hmm. that's still the most unused mm -hmm. exemption. What impact can that have on your property taxes? Your value has no limit to going up to the increase. There's no protection, and. You asked me which one is most unused. I'm also going to say which one is uh, misused by the county, and that's still going to be homestead exemption. So not going to name any counties, but we could currently be in that county. Um, they they did a lot of a lot of shady stuff on a lot of my clients last year. Um, in 2022, I saw so many homestead exemptions just randomly fall off. And the homeowner has not switched ownership. They have not refied. There is no change in ownership. They are still living there. Nothing has changed except for the fact that their driver's license expired and Fort Bend County did not inform them. And the homestead exemption just randomly fell off and their values skyrocketed. That's an opportunity for you to reach out to your clients and talk to them or prospective clients to go continue to look at their homestead exemption to make sure that they can still um, put that claim. We had a question here real quick. When when they if, when they do something like that, like drop off a home exemption, is that an easy fix for the for the homeowner? It depends on how far back you're going. If you do not realize it in the first year and you're retroactively filing it, you're talking about a lot of refunds, which means that not only do you need to get it approved by the county, you need to make sure it's on your account, but then you need to make sure, does it get transferred over to the taxing jurisdiction? Does your check get issued? That's a lot of work in there. 
If it's just like, if you catch it for the current year and you're like, oh, it fell off this year, then yeah, they'll probably put it on immediately in a month or so and your value should be okay. But I actually have some examples of that too, if you want me to show you. Um, there is actually some clients whose homestead exemptions I did file, but the values weren't corrected. Um, I can just do IAs. So a homestead exemption is supported by your driver's license to make sure that you are actually residing in that home and it's your primary residence. So you're turning in a driver's license. A driver's license is not permanent. It does expire time to time. So when it expires, they kick out your exemption until you turn in a new valid one, but they don't inform you about it. And a lot of homeowners think that a homestead is a one-time thing. As long as you're living there and there's no ownership change, you're not filing again. So they're not thinking anything of it. No one says, hey, well, go ahead and make sure when your license expires, submit a new one. That's usually every six years. <laughs> yeah. I had a situation where a client had divorced and she stayed in the home. And when she when she went to go sell it, discovered that she didn't have homestead. It dropped off when she got divorced. Probably because uh, the husband removed his name from the deed. Yeah, if there is any type of ownership change, it does fall off. So this right here, um, I believe 2021 is when they moved into the house. So what's wrong with these numbers? Anyone who's good at math? Well, beyond 10%. Yes. Which year is beyond 10%? Um, the 2021 to 2022. Yes. This one right here is beyond 10%, right? So when I took a first glance at this, I got the homestead applied. I see homestead at the top. Great. I'm seeing this right here. And I'm like, okay, so they applied a cap law. So the homestead values have been fixed. That was first glance. When I started doing the math, I'm like, wait. They did it on 2023, but they didn't do it on 2022. If this value in itself is wrong, 10%ing from that is also wrong, right? So what they did was they just did 2023, hoping that 2022 wouldn't get caught. This is Fort Bend County. And explain to them about the 10% for the people who don't understand that and why we keep referencing the 10%. So the homestead exemption um, puts a uh, limit on the increase of your assessed value, which is your taxable value by 10%, no more than 10%. It can go less than 10% of an increase, but no more than 10% of an increase. That is not, however, for the market. There is no limit for the market. The market value is based on what the market is doing. So you can jump 200,000, 500,000, a million, whatever your market is doing but you're assessed, appraised, all the counties have a different word, your taxable value can only be 10% maximum year after year. Unless if there's an ownership change, homestead falls off, or there's some type of new construction. Can you hear me back here? Yes. Okay. So I've heard that you can go back retroactively if you haven't had your homestead exemption on for two years, but you've owned the house for over two years correct. and it should have been on there. So correct. you can do that. Am I yes. correct? Yes. Is there a maximum? Yeah. A maximum for how far back? Two years. Two years retroactively is what you can do. Now, if you're doing it by January 31st, of the current year, then you can tack on that third year. If you're doing the application by January 31st, you can tack on the third year because technically you're still in the previous year. All right, so final, final question with Kendra, and then we're moving on. She'll be here a little bit afterwards for any additional questions. Mm -hmm. And do you have your cards? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thanks so much, great information. This is, I'm lazy, didn't look this up, but is it possible if you live in two locations and they're not in the same county in the state of Texas, can you have two homesteads? No. Just kidding. The, in fact, the homestead exemption is not statewide, it's countrywide. Oh. So in the whole country, you can only have one primary residence. Gotcha. Now, is that to say that people don't claim it two places? They do. <laughs> if they get caught, they will be back taxed. So that's, that's a disclaimer I'm giving to all my clients if they do wish to do that. 
All right, sounds great. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for that Absolutely. information. It's Absolutely. Hold on, hold on. So the two ladies do the I was about to ask. Yeah. <laughs> it depends. I would for for about ninety percent of the people, yes, May fifteenth is the is the deadline. If you go on Fort Bend County's website and you look up your you look up your address, it should have a date on there. If if it is, it should say like protest deadline date or something like that. If that's after May 15th, then call me. But if it says May 15th, then yes, unfortunately it is. <laughs> Busy and you think your your clients are taking care of it, they're not. So do your due diligence and it's not too late, right? And education for moving forward along the way. We can still help our clients with that. People in there asking questions. So absolutely, this is information that helps you throughout the year to be relevant to your clients because it's beyond just this May 15th deadline. And as she mentioned, there are still some people, 10% out there, who probably received their notice well beyond time and still have 30 days to protest, okay? Um, we had some questions on here. I know, people on Zoom, y'all should have came. Okay, so let me see. Let me see if I can One find your phone number. We can yeah, we can give your phone number. Um, do you just want me to? Awesome. You just want me to give it out while you're looking yeah, at yeah, questions? Yeah, sure. yeah, Okay, so my phone number is 832-283-1602. Can you repeat that? 832-283-1602. All right. I, I have a question. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. If we are protesting and you are giving examples of homes that were sold, so I know you said market value versus appraised value are different. So when you are protesting, do you show the market value? like of sample homes that have been sold or do you, should you show their praise value of other homes? Amazing question. That's also one of my myths. Um, you are protesting the market and the market is the only thing that the county is setting. So the market is the only thing that you can show as a comparable. I always say the appraised has everyone's exemptions in place and your exemptions may not be the same as the neighbors. So with that being said, appraised is not something that you can compare. It's only the market because the market is the only thing that the county set equitable throughout the neighborhood. Great question. She said, is it the market according to the county or the realtor's comps? So in the realtor's comps, a lot of times I tell agents that Price per square foot is generally how you're doing the comparables and you're getting an average, but the county is doing a lot of extensive adjustments beyond that. The county is adjusting age differences. The county is adjusting land differences, extra feature differences. Um, if it had a remodel, then you're changing the uh, ex effective life of the house versus your comparable. So all that stuff is adjusted. And uh, so it does skew the comparables that the agent gives versus um, what the county has. So that could be a starting point, but that wouldn't be the average of what the client should be expecting. Is the house uh, register under the corporation or LLC? Is the tax is lower than the residential house with the same area? Is that right? Absolutely not, because if it's under LLC, there's no homestead exemption, so there's no protection. In the current market, your value would be much more increased. Okay. All right. Again, she's going to be here to answer some more questions. You guys have her phone number. We'll also place it on there, but we thank you so much for bringing yeah. that helpful information. We look to partner with you and help our clients get connected as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.